So the Ordinary brought out a milky toner with fermented ingredients, kind of like a K-Beauty essence, first treatment essence. I was so excited when I heard about the launch of this product and I was really keen to try it out. But did it live up to the hype that I built up inside of me? Let's, um, let's talk about it and let's talk about this, this toner. In case you don't know me yet, hi, I'm Ulrike. I am a key beauty and skincare content creator and just general lover of all things skincare. And today we'll be talking about the, the ordinary 30% Saccharomyces ferment milky toner. So I'm first going to tell you a little bit about what this toner is supposed to do, what the ordinary says about it, and what type of skin concerns and skin types this has been formulated for. Then I'll tell you a bit about the key ingredients, especially about Saccharomyces. And then I give you my opinion on this toner after having tried it. So the ordinary Saccharomyces ferment 30% milky toner comes in this 100 milliliter um, sort of frosted glass bottle. Looks pretty, pretty nice. I actually quite like the look of this. And it's a toner with a milk-like texture that was specifically formulated to offer very gentle exfoliation for sensitive skin. So the idea is that it is an alternative to their much harsher, quite aggressive, I feel, especially for the face, 7% glycolic acid toner, which honestly, I don't know many people who use it in their face, on their face. Usually people use it all over their body, but it is quite a strong formulation. And glycolic acid is not ideal for sensitive skin because it is it can dry up the skin and it can also cause a lot of inflammation and redness. The Ordinary says this toner can be used twice daily, which is certainly different from any other acid style toner, which usually can only be used maximum once a day. And it is said to target uneven skin tones, hyperpigmentation, sort of dullness of the skin, supposed to brighten the skin and again, be very gentle, even on sensitive skin types. So as for the main ingredients, obviously the number one ingredient is the fermented uh, yeast extract called Saccharomyces. I'll probably mispronounce that, but I put the name somewhere here so that you can read it and uh, choose your own <laughs> pronunciation because I just cannot find the correct one online and everyone seems to pronounce it a bit differently. So. Who knows? I always say Saccharomyces. It's probably wrong. And uh, this is a an ingredient that has been used in Asian skincare for a really long time, honestly. Predominantly, you can find it in both Korean and Japanese so-called first treatment essences or treatment essences or first essences. These almost always contain either Saccharomyces or the other one is Galactomyces. They are both fermented yeast extracts or yeast or bacteria that you find on yeast, basically. And they are supposed to help brighten the skin. They do target hyperpigmentation, but mostly they're used for sort of an overall dull complexion, especially as we age. Our skin tends to kind of lose that youthful brightness and tone and the evenness as well. Hyperpigmentation issues are a big thing once you hit at least 40, usually already in your 30s, you can see those age spots kind of starting to appear. I certainly have trouble with that. I know you always say that I don't have them, but guys, I'm using makeup, so <laughs> you cannot see them. I assure you, as someone who is highly sensitive to skin and is freckled all over, I do have all sorts of age spots. It's not super terrible, but they are definitely there. And if you could see my back, my entire back is covered in them. So yes, I do have age spots. According to The Ordinary, this contains a 30% concentration of Saccharomyces ferment with 3% fermented NAG or N-acetylglucosamine, which I also will put somewhere here because I probably also mispronounce it. So NAG or NAG is the other big 
key ingredient in this formula. And I have talked extensively about NAG or NAC in my review of the, the Ordinary NAC Serum. So you can watch that to get the full explanation. But to shorten that a little bit, NAC is another very gently exfoliating ingredient, though from what I've heard, it would have to be a higher percentage than the 3% to really bring a lot of exfoliation because I've heard that it has to be at least 4%. But anyway, NAC is used as an exfoliating ingredient that nevertheless is very, very gentle. It's also a humectant. It's a precursor to a hyaluronic acid. And it can also help supposedly with wrinkles, which I, of course, find very interested, interesting as a woman in her 40s. Uh, I did not see necessarily any of these amazing effects when I used the, the ordinary NAG serum. However, for me, that serum was fantastic because it was so, so good for redness. So if you do have sensitive skin, redness prone skin, I really can very highly recommend NAG as a redness calming and combating ingredient. Now NAC is also a, an inhibitor of the enzyme that causes an excess of melanin production, AKA leads to hyperpigmentation. So it is apparently quite a promising ingredient in formulas that combat hyperpigmentation. Again, from what I understand as a non-chemist, usually the concentration has to be higher than the 3%. So yeah, but technically it is an ingredient used for hyperpigmentation, especially in combination with the Saccharomyces. This should be quite good as an overall brightening and slightly lightening hyperpigmentation combating formula. And then key ingredient number three is squalane, which is an, an oil-like substance. It's not actually an oil, but it has that oil texture, basically. It is a substance that is usually worn from olives, and it has a very similar make a biological makeup to the sebum of your skin, which is why even people with more oil prone skin usually tolerate it well without breaking out from squalane. So just like a normal oil, it is just a moisturizing ingredient. That's pretty much what it does. It's also a tiny bit emollient and again, usually well tolerated by all skin types. As for my review, you already guessed it and I kind of already very clearly hinted at it. This was not my favorite, the ordinary product. <laughs> and I really did so very much want to love this. I have been a lover of fermented essences, Korean essences in particular, for a very, very long time, many years. There's so many great fermented first treatment essences from Korea. And I did kind of expect this to be on the same level because it contains the same main ingredient. However, this just kind of, it kind of just fell flat for me, unfortunately. First of all, this just was not very hydrating. Whenever I used this, I just kind of felt like I was putting on milky water. <laughs> it lacks the hydration levels that I get from a really well formulated fermented essence, such as the Iope essence, the Misha essence. Those have a similar, not milky, usually they're clear, but they have a similar water-like texture, but they feel so refreshing, very hydrating, and they instantly kind of just plump up the skin while also being slightly exfoliating. So they do manage all the things that this promises because I can already tell that some people will go, oh, well, it's supposed to be a, a, an exfoliating toner. But however, it also contains squalane. So they are also implying that it will be hydrating or even a little bit moisturizing, like most milky toners are supposed to be. But this really does not have a good hydration or moisturization level, in my opinion. As for the exfoliation, now I have to admit that I didn't use this for very long, simply because I really do not like it on my skin. So I cannot give you a super long-term experience in review, I'm sorry, but it just 
I just never reach for this because I really don't like the experience of this on my skin. After using it a couple of times, again, compared to other Galactomyces or Saccharomyces containing uh, essences, which work pretty fast in terms of just overall having an, a refreshing and overall sort of brightening effect on the skin. This does not have the same effect. I do think the texture looks really cool. I will show you uh, a close up. I think uh, there is a certain elegance to it when you first apply it or try it out on the back of your hand. And I really love the milky texture. And I really like that it's overall a very gentle formula. If you look at the ingredient list, there's not much in there besides the squalane and the key ingredients, the saccharomyces and the knack. But it just really lacks something. <laughs> it lacks the elegance that the other fermented uh, essences that I've tried have. And it lacks, I think, maybe a bit of glycerin or a bit of just a nice humectant in there that could have, I feel, pulled the formula together a little bit better. It just does not really fully do anything besides just a slight hydration, I guess, and a slight exfoliation, but I feel not enough to justify buying this because this is also actually quite pricey, I find. This is only 100 ml, so it's much, much smaller than usually what you get from Korean brands. And for a not much higher price point, the Korean fermented toners are just much higher quality. This is 100 ml and usually costs, I think, around $17 or 17 euros. I find that quite a lot for such a small size. And again, for something that just does not deliver. For me, this is just not it. And I'm very sad about it because I really was determined to like this. And it had all the base components to impress me, but it did not. For all of you that want to try a good fermented toner that has the same base ingredient, which again is the fermented yeast extract, I would suggest trying a Korean first treatment essence. There are a couple of really good ones out there. If you want one with a low price point, the Cynic first treatment essence is very good. I'll leave a link somewhere down here so that you can see the full name and where to buy it. I think I bought mine for roughly like 18 or $19 at Olive Young. So I find that really good. It's a larger bottle. And if you want to invest a little bit more, Ayope makes probably the best first treatment essence, fermented essence that I've ever tried. It's just very hard for me to get here in Europe for some reasons, but I think they have a US store where you should be able to get it. It's called the IOP Bio Essence, I believe. It is fantastic, highly recommend it. And then Misha also makes a very famous sort of cult status essence that has a new formulation almost every year. I don't know which generation we are on now, the sixth generation, I think, or even the seventh. It's the Time Revolution First Treatment Essence, also really fantastic. And even though they might be a tiny bit pricier, but not even by much, because again, the bottles are much larger than this cute little thing. <laughs> it works much better. This did not work for me. Unfortunately, the ordinary just did not quite hit the mark with this one. We'll, we'll see how the body care will, will go for me because they just sent me the body care. So expect that review in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and that was all I wanted to say about it. As I said, I think you should rather go for a Korean treatment toner. And if you want gentle exfoliation, if that's your main goal, then go for the Geek and Gorgeous Calm Down Exfoliator, which is the best liquid exfoliator that I know. And it is very gentle and can be used even if you are rosacea prone. So th those are my recommendations. This, I would say it's like a two out of five if I had to rate it. <laughs> it's just to me not really worth investing the money that it costs, I'll be honest. And that was my review of the, <laughs> the Ordinary Milky Toner with Saccharomyces, which didn't work out for me, unfortunately. 
If you are new here, it would be great if you stuck around and subscribe to my channel. I do a video every other week usually. I might go back to weekly soon. We'll see how I do time-wise, <laughs> but it would be great if you could subscribe, maybe leave a like and a comment if you find this helpful. If you really love this product, I definitely want to hear from you because I'm always happy to hear other opinions, especially when I don't like a product because I'm always a little bit unsure whether I'm just being too harsh or too mean. All I can do is try out products and if they don't really fulfill what they're meant to do, then I usually don't rate them that high. That's kind of how that works. But if you love this, I'm always happy to hear from you to have just a difference of opinion for those people unsure whether they want the product. And otherwise, I see you in two weeks or in a week. I really don't know about the rhythm at the moment. <laughs> and until then, please take care. Bye.